Hello and welcome to Ask an NHD alum. I am Wendy Rex Atset. I'm the state coordinator for the National History Day program in Utah, and I'm really excited to welcome NHD alum Hera Cross. Hera is in ninth grade this year, but last year she went to nationals with a website project on the scientist Rachel Carson. And we're going to hear from her about her project, and then I'll ask her some questions about doing an HD. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Hera. Okay. Um, so Rachel Carson is known for writing a book called Silent Spring. And basically what that's about is her ideas about the use of chemical pesticides. So DDT is this chemical pesticide that was really widespread. Everyone used it, everyone loved it. These are some of the ads, primary sources, that I found about this. All of them are directed towards parents, towards parents with children. And the idea is that everyone thought it was so safe, when in reality, there was so, many, so much evidence towards the contrary. And it was revolutionary that she wrote this book that told everyone that that was wrong, that that was false, and that the companies were lying to you. Like her whole thing was building up this idea of a perfect world and then breaking that down like this is not perfect. This is not how things should be. And the scientists didn't exactly like hearing that. They didn't like the idea that this woman knew something that they didn't. So they tried to um, attack her for that and tried to tell everyone that she was hysterical, too emotional to understand what she was talking about. But when it came down to it, she was right, and pesticides were deemed unsafe. So yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Sorry, I was muted when I started to talk. Um, so Hera, tell me, how did you learn about Rachel Carson? How did you know this is the project that you wanted to, this is the topic that you wanted to focus on? So um, I'd already been pretty interested in science, women's history to begin with, but I saw a documentary on PBS about Rachel Carson and Silent Spring. And that documentary was honestly incredible. And I watched it several times while making this project. So that's how I learned about it. Is that, I know I've seen documentaries about Rachel Carson before that have historic uh, film footage of people like pumping DDT cl in clouds over like a swimming pool or just over mm -hmm. people, you know, just sitting around at a park. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Yes, it's, it's kind of shocking to think that that was considered not just fine, but pretty normal or a sign of progress. Yeah, the idea that humans could, are readily controlling nature, that we're in control of the world around us was pretty prominent, when in reality, we're just as much a part of nature as everything else. We have no control over what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you had the opportunity to like research her more for your National History Day project. Did you find that, um, were you surprised at what you were learning through your research? Yeah, on some things. I, like, the biggest thing is just how normal it is. Because as a kid now, we grow up like with all the chemicals put out of reach, constantly being told that we do not touch ever. Whereas it was just sprayed everywhere with no thought to that. And it feels so foreign growing up in this kind of environment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about working in the website category. And I know that you were using NHD Web Central last year. That was the first year that it was released and we had a lot of bugs to work out. But talk about what you liked about building a website to present your work and what some of the challenges were. I think I liked it because it felt pretty similar to like designing a PowerPoint presentation it essentially had like the same kind of feel, the same kind of flow. So it's, and it feels like it's easier to do video, do audio, and you can copy paste stuff from documents you're already working on. So that's helpful too. Mm -hmm. 
did you figure out um, what were some of the challenges to working with the website builder? It that was, might alert people to. It was pretty glitchy. The background on this website, the two darker stripes on the sides, those were not cooperating because I had them a different color originally. So I, my dad had to help me go into the code and change the actual code of the website to get them to do what I wanted them to. There mm -hmm. were several instances of that. And then like the buttons at the bottom will not line up evenly. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so you just kind of have to accept that things aren't going to line up. You just have to do the best you can and hope it looks decent. <laughs> That's really good advice. And I know that they've done, they were gathering feedback from students all over the country all through last year because they knew that the very first year that the program software was released, there would be things that became clear that need to be changed. And so the new version this year, they have put a ton of improvements that really are based on what kids were saying, you know, things that were really hard or things that just didn't work right. So that's one piece of good news is that the builder is just in much better shape now. It's had, it's had a year to be kind of nurtured and, and cared for. And so it will be easier for people to use. But um, it is a custom design builder for this. So it's not the same as like Weebly or Wix or some of the other ones that you, or a Google site that you might be more familiar with. Yeah. Um, so what's your number one tip to other students for doing an NHD project? I think regardless of whatever project you're doing, whether it's a paper, performance, or website, sort things. Like I wrote my analysis, I came, wrote out the different page headers. So I sorted it by this first, and then I had the heading like here, and I had this on like every page. And I wrote out the analysis based off that template, and then I sorted the pictures based off that template, and I sorted the other primary sources based off that template. So I had all of these documents that lined up with the same like format, so when I went to input that into my website, it was super easy to find everything and keep track of like design layout for the website too. So I could keep track of everything in an organized way. Right, so it sounds like you started, before you even really started putting things onto your website, you already had a really strong outline and you knew what your page organization was going to be and you had already organized all of your information in the different areas, right? Uh-huh. What did I didn't even start building the website until like a month before the actual history fair. Everything mm -hmm. else happened before. That's really smart. You were really smart to have waited that long. Um, and I would advise that to, to any category, not just websites, is to wait until your outline is really solid and your, all of your components, you're really happy with them before you actually start to build. Um, what did you build though those outline that outline and those components in? Did you do it in a Word doc or did you? Yeah, do I had it? like three Word documents open all okay. at the same time. I never closed those tabs for a solid eight months. <laughs> yes, yes. I think you could also maybe outline and build in that build your material in a Google Slides probably, and uh, that could yeah, work. It's very similar to a PowerPoint, so you could probably format it the same way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. What was the first thing you did to start working on your NHD project? I was following assignments from my history teacher, but I think when I really started doing stuff on my own, I watched that documentary again, I started going through sources and I took bullet points of like every point made into like one document, it was a lot of information and then made that like filtered that down a little more and then just kept doing that over and over again until I had it very concise and very easy to read. And then I could use that information to turn it into an analysis. So just gather all the information you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. Tell me about um, where you found the primary sources that you have in your project. So I found them in a lot of different places. I found them, like I don't really have one main source my research style is generally just to Google something and then copy every link on the first page and then filter through those to find the best ones. So it's from all over the internet, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of these are even um, screenshots from a 
documentary. That's where I got some of these ones. So basically anywhere I could find something that looked very useful and made sure, as soon as I made sure it was uh, authentic and a reliable source, then I could use it. Cool. What, um, what was the, what was the primary source that was like for you the most powerful or the most meaningful? The one that just made you go, whoa. I think it's probably these ones on this page, these ads as a group, because they're just so blatantly telling you how good this danger is and how beneficial it is and the way all of them are using children as an advertising me measure. Like that's pretty shocking to see. It is when we think of how like now we work so hard to keep children away from chemicals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. How did you keep track of your research, like in order to create your bibliography? So, you know, you have to keep track of all that citation information. What system did you use? So usually every single time I open a website and it looks good, I just copy the link into a document. Every time I read a book and it's good, I just type up the title. So if I keep the link and if I keep the title, then I can then use those to form my bibliography because I have the, the basis of the source all in one place. Mm -hmm. And did you start doing that? It's what's really important is to do that as you go, which is kind of what you're describing is if, if, if the website looked useful, you would capture that URL right then. Uh -huh. You can't go back. Uh -huh. yeah, you and don't, you don't find it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have to do it as you go. Very good. Um, what was your biggest challenge in working on this project and how did you overcome it? I think it was figuring out how to write an analysis. <laughs> because I had to start out, I had all this information, I had no idea how to make it into an actual analytical work, something that you could read and draw a conclusion from. I, I had no idea how to do that. So I just started by listing off all their information and putting that into a paragraph format. And then I slowly started realizing, hey, this, why would they do that? Why did this happen? And then once I answered that question, I could start putting two and two together and connecting the dots and that connecting the dots is what the analysis is. So once I figured that out, it got a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And some of that just takes time. You really have to give yourself enough time to, like you can't just find a source and throw it up and throw it up and throw it up on your, on your project. You really have to read them carefully and give yourself time to think about them and think about how this source relates to that source and maybe these contradict each other. Uh -huh. Your project is a good example of, of primary sources that are very contradictory. And so a big part of your analysis is like, well, how do I make sense of these advertisements and, you know, what Rachel Carson was arguing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, last question. What's your favorite thing about NHD? What did you really like the most or feel like was the most useful or important to you from doing this project? I think once I really got into it and once I got past just all like the really hard work of it and getting everything done, I learned a lot. <laughs> like half the stuff I had no idea even happened. Like a year ago, I had no idea DDT even existed. Or like I only heard Rachel Carson's name once and now I could basically describe this entire little section of the time period in detail. And I think it's interesting to see just how much more I've learned from this. Do you find that it changes the way you look at like advertising today? Huh. Yeah, it's all very much designed to play on insecurities, to play on what's most important to you because children are important to you. So if children are important, important to you, then you must buy this product to keep them safe. A lot of psychological warfare almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's a good example of how, you know, studying something that happened this long ago, it's, it's not irrelevant. It mm -hmm. really in, can inform the way you understand what's happening around you now. Yeah. 
Do you have anything else you'd like to say to future NHD students out there? I think just take your time because <laughs> this stuff isn't going to happen in a day. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a month. It took me a year to do this entire assignment. So just take it slow and let the information sink in so you can make sense of it later. That's really great advice. All right. Well, thank you so much, Hera. Thanks for joining us and we'll see y'all later.